Satnam and welcome to Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan. It's my pleasure to lead you in yoga this morning. My name is Dr. Ann Taylor and we'll begin by feeling our sitting bones connecting to the earth. Checking, make sure that your knees are higher than your hips, excuse me that your hips are higher than your knees. And you may need to sit on a cushion to elevate the hips so that the knees are lower. And now find a nice comfortable position where you're elongating the spine. And as you begin long deep breathing, focus the awareness on the navel point. Inhale as you open up the abdomen, bringing the breath up through the heart center to the collarbones, feeling the rib cage open fully. Allowing your thoughts for the day or from the evening, or if you're in a different part of the world where it's just getting dark now, whatever the situation may be, just focus on the immediate presence of yourself in the present moment. And as you continue to settle in, allow an intention for today's class to come into your consciousness. At the beginning of every Kundalini Yoga class, we tune in with the Adi Mantra by chanting Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo three times. On the creative force of the universe, we are calling upon that. Guru, the movement of darkness to light within our own being. We'll follow that by the mantra for protection. And now rub the palms of the hands briskly together, placing them at the heart center. And when you chant, chant from the navel. It's not about singing. It's really connecting with your authentic voice that begins at the navel and emanates. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Deep inhale. Exhale. And inhale to tune in. Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo Ong Namo
Exhale, relaxing the hands down. And we're going to begin with an exercise that's called to balance circum circumvent force. And Yogi Bhajan talked quite a bit about the circumvent forces as it's a combination of things in a sense. It's sort of an aura, as he described it, a circle around the body, which of course, from a science point of view, would be our electromagnetic field. But it, it goes beyond that as, as we work with, um, you know, things such as the nervous system and the hormonal system as we talk through yoga, uh, the, it, it, it goes into other realms. So the circumvent force is also a way of protecting ourselves from negativity. So when we have a strong auric field, a strong electromagnetic force, it keeps some of the negativity the stronger the, the field, the more negativity we're keeping away. So Yogi Bhajan said that this secret has been told through the ages. This is nothing new to the yogis. Many times this truth has been taught to humanity, and every time they have forgotten this truth. So I'm quoting Yogi Bhajan right now. This truth humanity has to learn, and after learning it, they have to practice it. Truth is the guiding factor of the human and the vibrations, which are based on the truthful person, Satnam, truth is my identity. Not only can we change what they want to change, but everything. So where the vibratory effects are caused, everything becomes truth, pure, and transparent. And of course, in these challenging times, there's much negativity, there's much falsehood, and it's best I find to help protect ourselves from some of that. So it's one thing to just have an understanding or to hear the words. The first Kriya we're going to do actually will be to strengthen and balance our own circumvent field. And this is a very simple but powerful exercise. And it begins by sitting in uh, Virasan, which means to take your left heel and bring it in close to your body the right foot, find a comfortable position. So it's, you know, you have to find a balance because you're basically just on one of the sitting bones and then grabbing hold of the knee. So if this does not work for you, you can sit in a chair and if possible, bring your, your knee up. As always, get creative. We're going to do this in a sequence um, of 26 cycles, but I am going to also time us so that if you don't finish the 26 cycles, um, we'll just all stop at some point. Okay, so clasping the left knee, the eyes are closed, and so inhale deeply, and exhale as you begin to bring your forehead down to the knee, exhaling down. So the forehead is now resting on the knee and you suspend the breath for 15 seconds. And as always, if that's too much for you, reduce it so your cycles may be shorter. And as you have your forehead to the ground, I just wanna come up so you can hear me. Uh, you want to focus the energy to the third eye point. That's the space between the eyebrows and maybe just up a little bit. And then inhale as you slowly bring the head back up for a count of five. So again, I'll just quickly review that. Exhale down for five. Suspend for 15 seconds, gathering the energy at the brow point and then inhaling back up for five. Continue that cycle for 26 rounds and let us begin.
Inhaling as you raise your head up. Exhaling as you bring the forehead back down to the knee. Suspending the breath. Focusing all of your energy at the third eye point. You can think of this as recharging the divine shell around you. Inhaling up for five, without pause, exhaling down for five. And now please complete the round you're on. And when you're finished, coming into easy pose, allow the eyes to remain closed and just sense, sense your electromagnetic field, your aura expanding. Visualize a protective shell around you from negativity, whatever the source may be. Excellent. So not only are we tuning our electromagnetic field, we're also allowing ourselves to be strong in the world because we're, we're, we're protected. And so we can afford to be humble and we can afford to be affectionate and serving others. Okay, that was beautiful. And so today's, we're going to, practice the 10 bodies again, because uh, this is just such a powerful Kriya. And of course, the 10 bodies are giving a, a burst of energy to each one of the chakras. So it's, it's one that should be practiced often. And we begin with stretch pose. So again, um, you may remember the modifications for stretch pose. You can bring your legs up higher or bend your knees, whatever works, or some people lift one foot at a time. So the position is to keep the small of the back on the floor. Eyes are open in this case, gazing over the toes and we begin a powerful breath of fire. 
Now, if you ladies, if you're on your moon cycle or maybe pregnant, always substitute long, deep breathing. And let us begin. This is just for one minute. Engaging the navel point. Fifteen seconds, finish strong. Inhale and relax. And just lie on your back for a few moments. And again, if you're not familiar with any of these terms, look on the website metaheartcenter.com. At the bottom of the page, there is a glossary which talks about things such as tuning in, breath of fire, or more elaborate instructions. Okay, and next is knees to nose with breath of fire. Hugging the knees, eyes are closed, focused at the brow point, begin a powerful breath of fire. Working beginning on the lower chakras, the lower triangle, our human animal nature. Excellent, keep going. One more minute. This is excellent for digestion as well. Inhale and relax the pose. Come sitting in easy pose. And just taking a moment, allow your eyes to remain closed, focused at the brow point. The next exercise is ego eradicator. And whenever we do breath of fire, we're focusing on the navel because we're pulling the navel back towards the spine on the exhale. Relaxing on the inhale, the breath naturally comes in, keeping the inhale and exhale equal duration. So eradicate, ego eradicator, really means that we are taming the ego, that we are, the ego does not like holding our arms up in the air like that, and it, it bites you on it, right? And this is not about a muscular strength. It's really ultimately about a surrender. As ironic as that is, when you release into the pose, it actually becomes effortless. So there's a, it's, it's a very profound shift that's happening. The soul, the higher self, which is located in the heart center, according to the uh, Kundalini tradition, and basically all yoga forms, the heart center is the home of the self with capital S. 
And so we are learning to give voice to that self. Some people think of it as that quiet voice within and letting the ego then execute the orders. So that's, that's where we're going here. So the to do ego eradicator, feel yourself sitting with a nice straight spine. Again, a chair would work. And you take the fingertips and you put them on the pads of the hands and the thumb is stretched away with both hands. So the thumb is representative of the ego. Now, when we're done with the exercise, it will call for root lock. So just a quick review, root lock is a three-part movement, squeezing the muscle of the anus sphincter, closed, the sex organ, which would feel as if you're stopping a flow of urine and pulling the navel point in. So it's a three part, but it happens all at once. You're locking the energy in. The apana comes up to the navel point. Apana is the eliminating force, the opposite of prana. So when these two forces meet at the navel, the kundalini begins to awaken. And these exercises as prescribed by Yogi Bhajan are formulated specifically to do it safely, gently. Okay, let's get on to it. So arms are up at a 60 degree angle, 11 and one o'clock. And again, thumbs are out, fingertips at the top of the pads. Focus is above the crown. Chin is in a slight neck lock, meaning tilting the chin down a bit and beginning breath of fire. Relax into it. If the mind begins to wander, come back to the breath, keeping the elbows locked, arms are straight. If at any point you feel yourself getting even the tiniest bit dizzy, stop and just resume long, deep breathing. We never want to get to the point where we're feeling dizziness. Pranayama is not about hyperventilating. Excellent, 30 seconds. Inhale deeply, suspend the breath, apply root lock, stretch the fingers, touch the thumbs overhead, and squeeze the energy from the base of the spine upward and out the crown. Exhale and let's repeat. Deep inhale, suspend the breath, apply root lock, and squeeze the energy up. Exhale as you gracefully relax your arms down through your auric field. 
And again, just pausing for a moment between exercises. And if you are watching this on a recording in the future, please make sure you try to do the exercises along with. Otherwise, it's kind of like watching grass grow. But the experience is all internal. So if you're doing it, you're, you're really feeling the experience, whatever that might be. Every day is different, right? So anyways, let's stretch out the legs. Just to keep my hips warm. So the legs are out as far as you can comfortably stretch them while maintaining a nice straight spine. So as you can see, I'm not terribly flexible in here. Some people can go a lot further. That's not the point. We're always allowing the yoga to meet us where we are, including the teacher. And so uh, Leipner stretch in this exercise, inhaling center, exhaling as you rotate and lift your heart or drop your heart center towards your knee. And take your two fingers, wrap them around your big toe, and your thumb presses against the big toe nail bed. That uh, stimulates the pituitary gland, keeping the leg on the floor. So if you're only able to come down to here, this is not about leaning with the head, it's leaning with the heart. And let us begin, inhaling center, exhaling left. Inhaling center, exhaling right. Finding a nice pace that works for you. If you're able to keep your uh, hands and fingers in toe lock, do so if you need to modify a bit as I'm doing, do so. Allowing the breath and motion to be one. The breath powers the motion, the motion powers the breath. Dropping your awareness into your body, out of your head. Letting the body's wisdom do its job. Beautiful. Now inhaling center and exhaling center. So you're just going up and down. Micro movements are okay. Some people may be bringing their heart center all the way down to the floor. It's not about you and the person next to you. It's really just about you and you with a capital Y. So hopefully this feels good on your lower back. Again, never bringing yourself to pain. Inhaling deeply, suspend the breath. Exhaling down to your maximum, holding the breath out for a few moments. Inhale, coming back into easy pose.
<clears throat> now grabbing hold of the ankles, and it's specifically the ankles because that will target a um, certain vertebrae. So inhale forward, exhaling back, rocking on the spine, inhaling forward, exhaling back for spinal flex. The head stays fairly constant. It's not bobbing up and down with the movements. Eyes are closed, focused at the third eye point, which is our default position. If you don't hear me say close your eyes, just go ahead and do so during the exercises. Of course, unless if you're not comfortable about something, balance. Always using your own judgment first. Making sure you're breathing fully on the inhale, completely on the exhale. You can slow these down as much as you like. And if someone's sitting in the room with you, they should be able to hear your breathing. It's a powerful breath. working with the prana and apana, the life force and eliminating force energy. Inhale deeply and relax for a moment. And now coming on to your heels in rock pose. If this does not work for you, then Remain in easy pose and grab hold of your knees. As we continue the motion, inhaling forward, exhaling back. We're moving up the spine, awakening the energy centers of the body. This is not something you can just read about and have it happen. You have to get the body involved. So it's important to be aware as you know as the day goes on as the week goes on as your sessions go on do you notice a change in the way you are feeling in general are you able to be more resilient as the times continue to increase with challenge it may be helpful to build up that circumvent field, the aura, protecting yourself. And again, this exercise can be done in a chair for those of you who are not able to sit on the floor, or a yoga bench is very handy too which is basically just a short stool. Inhale center, exhale and just relax for a moment. So the next exercise is spinal twist. So we're moving now up into the heart center, the fourth chakra 
in the Contra Kundalini system. And so it's a pivot point. It's a pivot point between the upper triangle and the lower triangle. The lower triangle being our animal nature. We are human, we are animals, part of this earth. We want to respect that, keep our bodies health, healthy. We're in this world. And then of course, the heart center opens up then the higher, connects to the higher energy planes of the throat, the element of ether, which is the last um, distinguishable of the elements before we move into the Ajna third eye, the crown, and beyond. So there's 10 bodies in this system, arc line, subtle energy body, radiant body, body. Okay, we're rested up. So let's grab hold of our shoulders, fingers front, inhaling as you rotate to the left and exhaling as you rotate to the right. The checkpoints are to keep your elbows up. The upper arms are parallel to the floor. Chin is in a slight neck lock, Jalandaban. And once you get your rhythm, mentally vibrate, sat on the inhale, nam on the exhale, sat nam, mentally. You're not chanting this out loud. Truth is my identity. Helps maintain a focus. Primal energy sounds of Satnam. Sa is the sun, sun energy, and moon energy too. Inhale, center, suspend the breath. Exhale and shake out the arms a bit. And so um, in some classes, if you take another yoga class with 10 bodies, you may find they just continue. They just move right along from exercise to exercise. So I'm scaling it so that beginners can, can do this work as well. Okay, and now we, uh, the next one is inhale, elbows up. So we're going to, again, grab hold of the shoulders and inhale as you raise the elbows towards the ceiling. If you're able to touch the wrist behind your neck without straining your neck, do so. Eyes are closed, focus at the brow, inhaling up, exhaling down. This is just for one minute. Inhale the elbows up, suspend the breath.
Exhale, releasing the arms down. And now place your hands in the Venus lock mudra. So that simply means to interlace your fingers and you're going to stack your thumbs. So for ladies, the right thumb is on top of the left. And gentlemen, it's the opposite. So it's basically just interlocked fingers. The thumbs are on top of each other. Venus lock. And now elbows are straight and inhale up, exhale down. Bring in the energy up. Harvesting some of the work. Inhale up, suspend the breath. Exhale and come back into easy pose. And so now with alternate shoulder shrugs, we're moving the energy up from the shoulders, up into the arc line the aura, the pranic field, subtle body, and up. And we'll begin with alternate shoulder shrugs, raising the left shoulder as you inhale, which is easier to do it. So unless you have a shoulder injury, you're really dropping those shoulders. It's a, it's a very strong movement. Breaks up calcium deposits as well. So we're moving energy and working also on the physical plane. Excellent. Also gets rid of some tension. And now reverse, inhaling the right up, exhaling the left down. If you feel tightness in the back of your neck, your upper back, just, conscious, just consciously let it go with the movement. Shed it like a snake, just let it go. And as you're doing this from home or wherever you may be at, Feel free to put on some nice yogic music in the background. The only time we don't do it is when we're tuning in. And now both up. Although there's nothing wrong with silence too, going deeper with it.
Inhale, both shoulders up, suspend the breath. Exhale and relax. Okay, the final exercise of the Kriya is to do 26 frogs. So if, you're, if you know frogs, you can get started. When you're done, come lying on your back, preparing for deep relaxation, but I'll review frogs for those who may not know. So the heels remain up off the floor for the entire exercise, and the feet are at an angle. So this is the down position when you finish the exhale. Inhaling up, so heels are still off the ground, exhaling down. So that's one round. Continue with 26. Okay, I will remain seated. I'll just give you a few more moments to complete if, if you're not already done so. That warms you up. And we'll do a nice deep relaxation. And this is really where the, yoke, the work of the yoga kicks in. And so now come lying on your back if you have not already done so. The body will make adjustments. If you feel a little shaking in your muscles or your nerves, just let it, let it work itself out. Of course, unless you, know, you suspect there's something more serious going on. But if we're finding our pace and if we're monitoring ourselves during the exercises. There should not be any issue. Okay. Feeling the temperature of the room on your feet. Noticing your toes. What are they up to? Relaxing the ankles. Feeling the shins and the calf muscles now relaxing. The knees. Relaxing any tension you may be holding there. And relaxing the thigh muscles. Any tension you're holding in your legs, just release it all now. Noticing that Mother Earth is holding you securely on your mat as I also extend out my awareness to you, holding the space. Inhaling deeply now through the base of the spine, mentally, of course, and up into the pelvic bowl region. Relaxing your navel point. Just inhaling and exhaling at a nice slow pace in the lower triangle. you prefer, 
you can inhale directly now through the navel point. Dropping all of your awareness now into the lower triangle. Releasing the hips. Relaxing the intestines, the gut. And now take a deep breath from the navel and draw it up into the heart center. Crossing that diaphragm, that knot of Vishnu, loosening it up. And just begin to inhale deeply through the heart center. The energetic or the spiritual heart is just to the right of the physical heart. And now inhaling deeply through the heart, bring that awareness up into the area of the throat. Mentally vibrate Sat Nam, Sat Nam. Truth is my identity. Relaxing the shoulders, allowing the arms to completely relax. All tension is now leaving your body. Inhaling deeply now through the third eye point between the eyebrows. And one more deep inhale and mentally exhale out the crown and envision golden light emanating, surrounding you in a protective glow of light as you now just surrender and relax in yogic sleep. You will periodically hear the sound of the crystal bowl tuned to the heart center just to let you know you're still connected.
Inhale deeply and begin to bring your awareness back into the room, making small circles with your wrists and ankles. And when you're ready, stretch your arms out over your head as you're lying down, fingers pointed towards the wall behind you, toes pointed to the opposite wall and elongate your spine. And now moving into cat stretch, arms out to the sides, knee across the body, and the head turns the opposite direction. Shoulders remain on the ground. And switching sides. And some people do both knees together if it's too much on their back. And now rubbing the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. Grabbing hold of the knees, rocking on the spine. And come sitting up for a meditation. So today we're doing a meditation to open the lock of the heart. So when our heart closes down, um, well, we know what that feels like. Keeping our heart open, we're open to life. Our body works better. And so it's a very simple meditation, but it's precise. So we begin by putting our, our palms facing each other, and about our hands are six to eight inches apart. We're going to use the tantric hada. It's H-A-R, it's pronounced hada but you're not going to say it. We're just going to use the um, music to help us with the motion. So on each hada, and you'll hear it shortly, you're going to expand your arms out to about 36 inches. But the, the trick is to do it as if you're being jolted by, it says 1100 volts. Now, of course, that's would kill you. But so the idea is to really, you're jolting so that you're it causes a sensation in the chest cavity that opens the heart center. And again, we're talking about the energetic heart. So um, hopefully you'll be able to hear this. It's about once a second if you can't. Just finding a normal breath pattern.
Bring forth the power of your entire being. If the mind wanders, come back to the movement.
keep the motion going. Inhale deeply, suspend the breath. Exhale. Inhale deeply, suspend. Exhale. Inhale deeply, relaxing your hands down. And breathing normally, just re relaxing. Just being with your experience for a few moments before we close. Feeling your heart center expanding, opening. Feeling the power of love for yourself, gratitude that you took the time for the practice. When you're in a state of love and open heartedness, it's very difficult to get into fear. At the end of every Kundalini yoga class, we end with the long time sun, an Irish blessing. We'll sing this in two rounds. For the first round, set the intention for yourself, perhaps to keep your heart open for the rest of the day. The second round, we'll send out an intention to the earth. The earth receives our love, and we listen to the messages of the earth. Anima Mundi, the soul of the earth, at this time is sending us messages. If our heart remains open, we can hear the messages and we can respond back. Okay. I'm rubbing the palms of the hands together, placing them at the heart center. Inhale deeply. Exhale, and inhale to close. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide our way on, guide your way on, guide your way on. And inhale for a long satna. Sat. Nam, Satnam, and thank you for attending.